A few months ago, Rob and I got invited to go to the Windy Hill Foundry's first Iron Invitational. I decided I was going to do something a little bit different than my normal style. So I brought this medium sized cast iron skillet, just your kind of run of the mill, find them at the flea market, find them at the antique malls, and I just, yeah, I just wanted something simple. All right, so the plan was to use these signboard letters. So they do have little tabs on the backs of them because they're supposed to be put into signboards. Um, so all I needed to do was figure out what letters I was going to use. And then I took the little tabs. Well, actually, Rob did this because I was, I was helping make molds for the other participants, but with an X-Acto blade, just cut off all the tabs of the letters and numbers that we needed to use. Then used Elmer's glue and just glued them right on the cast iron skillet. Clark and the Windy Hill Foundry use a clay bonded green sand that is activated when water is added to it. If you've been watching my videos, you know that my specialty is the resin bonded sand. I have done Petrobon sand molds before at the Metal Museum in Memphis, and there were a lot of similarities to the Petrobon sand and this green sand, but there definitely were still some nuances that Clark had to help me with. Thankfully, he's a great and kind teacher. He's all set up to mull his own sand and rehydrate it. His sand already has all the additives and, and bonding agents in it. The first step was just assisting him in mulling the sand and getting it ready to ram two sides. How to make a cast iron skillet. No, you gotta help me. I'm watching. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna help you from right here. I can help. Oh my goodness. No, I mean like he's got to help me tell me what to, okay, you'll tell I'm me what to do. Okay, all right. So today I'm going to cast this cast iron skillet with my and Rob's name on it and our wedding date. Step number one, find out where your gating and venting is going to be. Step number two. Get a bigger flask. That's what we want. All right, so okay. with the handle here, we're not worried if that chills. We're gonna have a runner that goes around here. I would put a gate here, a wide one here, mm -hmm. here, and four places. So you're ready to go. Yeah.
again. Don't waste it. It's full. It's coming out. Right. We got a leaker. No way, though. Do we need to put more weights on this one before we hit it? Uh, wait, which one is this? Please? Get a hold of it. Go here. You're, you got the driving end, baby. I like to open my molds the, the day after the iron pour just so that it gets gives it a chance to cool down a little bit. So at this point when I'm opening, I really didn't expect that the the skillet would have cast because of how much iron ran out of the side of the mold. This is the pattern that we made the mold of and I'm holding it up next to what actually was cast in the mold. I'm brushing it with these little steel brushes just to kind of get the extra sand off. So is this the channels that you dug with the spoon? Right. Mm -hmm. To, okay. Yes, and so it basically came in here and then this is like the kind of catch riser that catches all right. the slag oh, and yeah, stuff. Okay. And then it just went, pew! And then maybe that's why it rose up is because there was just so much pressure all the way around. Well, and been. then filled this and then was just like, we gotta go somewhere, pow, out. Yeah. So I where did it actually fill the cast iron skillet at? So it, it filled it in these, four places. like one, two, three, okay. four. Okay. Cast iron actually is really brittle. If you know where to hit it in the right place, you can get a really controlled break. Like, 
Yeah, so just a big shout out to Clark Easterling and Windy Hill Foundry for having this event and also for his wonderful wife, Josie Easterling, who fed us all and and took care of us all, looked after us. So they really did a great job. Once I was back at home, clamped it up in this vise. I used rubber as a barrier in between the vise jaws and my cast iron. The steps that I typically follow for finishing my iron castings are to use a cutoff wheel and score any of the gating or venting and then I'll hit it with a hammer and it comes right off. And then I switch to a grinding wheel on the angle grinder and the, ang and the angle grinder will take off the bulk of the extra material. And I also kind of use the grinding wheel to sculpt a little bit and, and really smooth out the transitions and the parting lines. Then I'll switch the angle grinder to have a sanding wheel and the sanding wheel will typically be 100 grit sandpaper disc. You know, it's like made with all the little flaps and then I'll use them for a while. So it actually end up giving me a finer finish than a fresh 100 grit wheel. And I just keep a stock of all different kind of grits and use the appropriate ones. So this one, uh, I just did the 100 grit or maybe it was 120, whatever, and then um, switched to my palm sander. And this is 100 grit sandpaper on the palm sander too, you know. It'll get pretty fine, but it's not going to be a mirror finish, and I don't really care. I mean, this this is just going to be a wall piece anyway, so it's just really to make sure that I feel good about it because you're not going to really be able to see the final finish when it's up on the wall. So after I'm done with the palm sander, I switched to this wire wheel, and it was really nice at getting the extra little sand particles off of the cast iron and bringing out that cast iron sand texture that is my favorite. Here you can see I hung the cast iron skillet on a steel rod in between these two tall sawhorses and we're just heating it with a little hand torch and then get the boil linseed oil on a cotton rag and just kind of coated it, heat it and then oil it, and then heat it some more, and oil it some more. The color got darker with each course that we did, and this is the final color. It really just came out so nice. All right, so here's the before and after. I guess anybody could really do this with any cast iron skillet, and you just glue these letters on. So these ones, you know, they just come right off. You just come right off um, with just a little bit of pressure. But this one, you know, this date may not be set in stone, but it is cast in iron. All of us who participated in the event owe Clark Easterling, the Windy Hill Foundry, and his wife Josie Easterling a huge thank you for their hospitality and generosity throughout the whole event. Definitely go over to Clark's channel, which is Windy Hill Foundry on YouTube and show your support. Let him know if you want to see more events like this one in the future and check out his videos on iron casting. If you thought this video was entertaining, give it a like to help it get seen by more people and check out the other videos that I have on my channel. If you want to see more videos of me casting iron or metalworking or traveling around the country, please show your support by subscribing to the Cast Iron Gypsy channel. As always, I love you and I'll see you at the next pour. Is he in the shot? Barely. You can't stay there. I can see his eyes. <laughs> yeah.
Get out of my shot, Bones. We're rolling. I'm so rushing right across it. I know. Get inside. Come on. Go. Go on, get.